Sometimes when Eric and Neil and I get to talking off the phone, I realize, hey, we're supposed to be on the air at the moment. Uh, and that's the case now. Eric Neal from the YMCA joining us this morning. Our conversation is brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Hi, Eric. How are you? As if I don't know. I'm great. How are you today? <laughs> Terrific. Um, so, so we were talking uh, off the off the air a couple of seconds ago. Uh, it is that time of the year, isn't it, when you begin to maybe look more outdoors and adjust to your programs? Uh, the spring uh, programming is coming up. Uh, anytime you get a weekend that's pretty nice like this last weekend, it's inevitable that everybody starts looking at that. Yeah, and sometimes they do that a little bit early because we are in Western PA. <laughs> no, yeah, we're all anxious for good weather. Yeah, sure. Sure, uh, but you do have uh, new programs that will be starting up soon, don't you? Yeah, yeah, we're we're planning for our soccer program already. We're uh, making plans for a rugby program, and then all of our baseball, t-ball, miracle league, all those sorts of outdoor programs are going to be starting here in a couple months. Yeah, yeah. So, if, if people want to learn more about those, um, the easiest way would be the website. Absolutely, absolutely. And we'll, we'll send stuff like that home. Uh, parents can look for those sorts of things in their kids' bags. Uh, we send that stuff home through the school district. They're very cooperative. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's terrific that uh, we're able to think about those things right now. Uh, and, of course, um, um, if, they're, if they're thinking about the Mac Park pool, which they can think about it any time they want, but that season will be approaching soon, too. Yeah, this is the time of year when folks start thinking about buying passes for the summer for Mac or they're signing their kids up for summer day camp for the summertime. Uh, and both of those programs are just about ready to go live uh, online on the website. And we'll be sending out uh, some direct mailers for those just to let everybody know that it's that time of the year. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So what else is going on at the YMCA right now? Uh, well, you know, we've got a lot of members that are coming in, which is great. Um, really trying to help people get started on their health and wellness goals. We have a new program called Enhance fitness for our active older adults. Uh, we just started round two of that and um, seeing really, really amazing results with the participants in that program. It's an evidence-based exercise program for active older adults, and the results have just been terrific. Yeah. How does it work? So it's a three-day-a-week program. It runs for 16 weeks, and um, it, it, it focuses on balance and stability and uh, beginning to develop some strength and uh, flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's for a beginner group, uh, beginner to intermediate, I would say, and um, that, those active older adults participate three times a week. Uh, we just started uh, talking about adding a nutrition component to it, oh. so they have seen amazing results uh, through the first session. We did a session in the fall, and it was uh, it was terrific, so uh, we wanted to make sure that we ran one again right away at the beginning of the 2022. You know, it's interesting that uh, that you, you you say you focus on on balance um, because that is one of the first things that goes uh, as people get older and become less active is uh, the ability to balance and 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 as we know um, falls uh, become much more common and and much more risky uh, for for really serious injury when the the older you get and the less active that you are. Well, it's one of those things where, you know, you start to lose your balance, so you start to be more careful. And by being more careful, you're generally less active. And then as you become less active, it's you struggle a little bit more with your balance and your strength. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, when you start to feel that or you start to feel a little unsteady or uneasy, um, it's, it's hard to push yourself or to get into the right program even to kind of regain that. And as you get concerned about it and you start to make those careful choices to be careful, you're actually moving in the direction to make it more difficult for yourself to get around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you have instructors who lead uh, group instruction. Is that the way this works? Yes, it is a group exercise program. It takes place in our gymnasium. Uh, we have 25 uh, registered participants each day. And uh, we have, I think, three or four certified instructors. They, they have to go through a certification process to be able to lead this specific program. Mm -hmm. And um, and they really help folks with their form because that's really important. Uh, they really go through some of the exercises that would mimic your day-to-day -day actions, and then they build from there. Yeah, and, and I think one of the important things that we might not really consider uh, as well as we should, or as much as we should, is that that uh, a group exercise a platform such as this, or or any of the other group uh, programs that you have at the YMCA, particularly if you're older, 
uh, there's a social aspect to it as well that is very, very important. Well, you know, that's. <clears throat> I think that the social side of it even kind of takes some of the difficult part of the exercise component out of it because people are there with their friends, they're having fun, um, and a lot of times they don't even realize how much progress that they've made mm-hmm. because in their mind they're just coming hanging out and having fun with their friends. Maybe the first couple of days are challenging and they're a little sore, but after that, they, they kind of lose sight of that, and it's just a fun thing to do with their friends. Yeah, absolutely, and and they make new friends, too, and, and for a lot of people, that's a, maybe a first step uh, back into socialization, um, and so that's a, that's a very, very good thing. Uh, Eric, I, I know, too, that I, I want to be sure that we mentioned the, uh, the 65th annual Good Friday Community Breakfast is coming up. Yeah, can you believe Easter's almost here? That, well, yeah. Uh, it's taken a long time, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's coming, um, and it's just right around the corner. It'll be, uh, let's say, April the 15th. Is that Good Friday? That's yeah. All right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, we're excited about it. And, um, you know, the gal that we have speaking, uh, she has an amazing story of forgiveness. And, um, you know, you can read a little bit about it online, but uh, she had a tragedy uh, that uh, her and her family experienced. And just through Christ alone, she was able to forgive the person who caused that tragedy and it really kind of led to her healing, uh, his healing. Uh, he was arrested. Mm-hmm. Uh, but through her testimony and her advocating on this person's behalf was uh, released from prison early. And uh, they go around together and just talk about the power of forgiveness and how important it is to, um, to, to forgive one another and move forward. What a tremendous story it is, uh, and, and it's it's heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah. and so for folks who maybe have never done the Good Friday Community Breakfast, of course, a couple of years ago, uh, you're able to do it online. What's the format for this year? We're, we're going to be live and in person this year. We're pretty excited about that. Yeah. Um, you know, everything, uh, you know, not only in our community, but nationwide is moving back to opening up and uh, being back with our families and friends and coworkers and everybody and, uh, and, and some uh, events and things like that. So we're really excited about what that might bring for us for the whole year. Uh, but the Good Friday Breakfast will be our first big event of this year. We're hoping for 225 people. It will be awesome. It will be great to have people out that morning and have a nice breakfast and a great message. Yeah, and it will be taking place at the Y? Yes, sir. Yeah, for people who want to get tickets to that event, they can do that now, right? Yes, they can. Yeah, by? Uh, they can do it either online or we have a number of committee members who are out in the community who are actually carrying tickets around. Uh, so uh, <laughs> we have uh, a lot, lot of ways that uh, we can put tickets in people's hands. Or if they just call us here at the YMCA, we can sign them up. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the Good Friday Community Breakfast is coming up on April 15th. You want to get your tickets as early as possible so that you know that you have them in hand and you'll be ready to go uh, and not a last-minute rush. Uh, mm-hmm. So. So that is yep. on the way. And that's just one of many things that will be happening at uh, Indiana County YMCA in the coming weeks and months. You'll get the Miracle League up and going again and various outdoor and indoor programs. Everything's available at the Y. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you mentioned about the whole socialization thing, and I, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned we started a whole new group of programs on Mondays, Wednesdays, and 30s, Thursdays for our active older adults. And they're not exercise, Todd. They're come and play games. Oh, yeah? Like, yeah? like board games and yeah. things of that nature? Yeah, yeah. It's in, it's in our rec center, and uh, we're inviting folks to come in. Don't even have to be members for now. Um, we're trying it out to just get people out of the house mm-hmm. and get going someplace again and come be with your friends and have fun. And you know, the hope is is that as people start coming back and getting reengaged, you know, they may have an interest in, in getting in, into an exercise program, or they may not, and, and that's okay, too. But we really want to focus on getting people out and getting them moving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a great idea. That's an absolutely fantastic idea. Just to get people uh, out and about and active because an active brain is as important as, as anything else. Uh, and uh, so if you're keeping your mind engaged, even if it's over a board game uh, or a game of crazy eights, uh, that's that's a good thing, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so terrific things happening at the Indiana County YMCA. The website, as I've said before, is one of the most amazing things uh, that uh, that you could ever come across when you talk about the, the amount of material and information that is there. Uh, Eric, uh, you want to talk about camp a little bit because uh, camp season's coming up. 
Yeah, yeah. Our camp, we have uh, our preseason, or, I'm sorry, our preschool camp uh, takes place here at the YMCA. So that is for our pre-kindergarten kids uh, and our kindergarten kids. They take place here at the YMCA, and uh, they have both indoor and outdoor programming because the, the younger guys, they need a cool place to go just in case. And uh, <laughs> we can provide those air-conditioned spaces here at the Y. And they do games and crafts and activities, and they learn how to swim, and they participating in, participate in a reading development program. We have a structured health and wellness program for them as well. Uh, so they have a lot of fun every day. And then our school-age kids, their camp takes place over at Mac Park, and our home base is the old skating rink over there. And they do the same sorts of activities. We, we do arts and crafts and STEAM activities. We do have a reading development program for them. They do a structured health and wellness program. They also participate in uh, swimming. If they know how to swim, then they get to recreate in that pool. If they don't know how to swim yet, they take swimming lessons until they do uh, because we want to make sure that all of our campers know how to swim. Uh, and then they'll go on a weekly field trip. Uh, the field trip is... Uh, linked to the theme of the week, and they'll go to places like the Carnegie Science Center, to Heinz Field. Uh, they'll go to the Apple Hill Playhouse and all other sorts of things. It's it's just a lot of fun for the summer. The parents know then that their kids are in a structured, safe, fun learning environment. They're with other friends their own age. Uh, they're well taken care of. And, you know, there's a thing called summer learning loss, and, and that happens when kids aren't uh, actively engaged in stimulating their brain all summer. And, um, you know, we, we've been collecting data to, to show that participating in our camp helps keep that from happening for our campers. Yeah, absolutely. All right, icymca.org, also the YMCA of Indiana County Facebook page. Yeah, you'll find all the information you need, or just stop by and people will be happy to talk with you, right? Absolutely. All right, very good. Eric Neal, thank you so much for visiting with us today. Todd, thanks for having me, buddy. Have a great week. You too, man. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160 AM and AM 1160 AM.